I've got a pile of stuff from the thrift store and you and I are going to make these pieces over together. Let's get to it. I'm so excited that you're joining me today for this thrift store makeover video. We've got lots of projects to share with you. My name is Cindy and I blog at reinventeddelaware.com. We love to reinvent and repurpose all sorts of home decor and furniture. Today, we're making over these little pieces. I found these pieces during one of our recent thrift shopping trips. I shared it here on YouTube. I'll link the video down below. This jar, believe it or not, I found it in the woods near our home. I'll tell you more about it, but when I saw all of these jars during my last thrift shopping trip, oh my goodness, I realized I had one in my own kitchen. First up, let's work on this jar. All right, so I had this jar in our kitchen for several years now. I use it as our little composting bin. Throughout the day, we save the food scraps and then my husband takes it out at the end of the day to our garden as a way of composting and adding organic material to our vegetable garden. But when I saw those $35 Hoosier cabinet jars at the thrift store, I'm sorry, that was actually at an antique store. It was not a thrift store. At priced at $35, you can tell. But anyway, I realized that I had one of those jars at home that I had painted so that we wouldn't see the food scraps in there. Well, I decided to take the paint off. I love using this ready strip. It's really easy. There's low fumes. It's, it's kind of safe from the environment. And you can see how fast it's working because I just started to apply it with the chip brush. And as I was applying it, it was literally coming off. This stuff works amazing. It started to crackle up and peel up the paint in a matter of minutes. I set the jar off to the side and it's just kind of working on its own. And in the meantime, I'm going to start working on this adorable little uh, craft cabinet. I don't know what this piece is, but I can't wait to show you. Anyway, it needs to be cleaned. We found it at an auction. It was outdoors. And frankly, any piece that you work on, you've got to clean it first. One of the cleaners that I love the best is from Dixie Bell. It's called Pristine Clean. It is a TSP alternative cleaner. They also have one called White Lightning, and they really do work pretty much the same. But I mix a little bit. You saw how little I mix in that water, just a very little bit. Put it in a spray bottle and wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. Then when you're finished, be sure to rinse out the cloth really well and wipe it down again to get off any of the residue of the TSP. All right, now you can really have a good look at this little cabinet. I think it's a little sewing cabinet. One of my daughters has already claimed it, so I'm fixing it up the way she wants it. The first thing I'm going to do after I cleaned it is to apply Boss. That is a really good primer that Dixie Belle puts out it blocks stains and odors and bleed through. So I'm not going to have any of that older color coming through. Now look at that design before I paint over it. Who here remembers the early American style of the 1970s? I know I sure do. That was the kind of home I grew up in was early American style. That first coat of primer needs to dry, so I'm moving on to my next project. And while I have the primer already on the brush, I'm going to go ahead and prime this piece. Remember, this was that palm tree print. Now, I'm not a palm tree kind of girl, but we're going to do something else. And the first step is to create a crosshatch design with the texture of the paint. I'm just brushing in all sorts of directions just to create some texture on the surface of the print. That ready strip really worked on that paint. It's all done. I took it outside to the hose and I scrubbed it all off and really cleaned it up well. Oh my gosh, it looks so much better already. Now, when I painted it, I loved that idea. And now that I've taken the paint off, I love that idea. I mean, the truth is I love change. The little sewing cabinet is going to need two coats of the primer because that color that was really wanting to come through. So two coats really made a huge difference there on the right you can see. 
All right, I have a lot going on in this span of two days. You can see here, I decided last minute to paint this pot out on my patio. Now you can find these thrift store planters, like you can just find these for a few bucks. In fact, see the one in the background, it has like a lattice design. We found that one at an auction for $2 and I made it over. I have a blog post and I will link that below. I painted that large one you saw there just a little bit ago and I also painted these two and I have a plan for these two. I want to attach them together to make them taller. I have a topiary that was just given to me for Mother's Day by one of my kids and I thought, you know what, it needs to have a statement piece. So I already had these two containers from my garden from 10 years ago. I've had it forever, these two forever. So they're kind of thrifted. Well, they're used, you know what I mean? Anyway, attaching them was interesting. I, I took that bolt with a nut on the end and I had three of them and I, I drilled a hole in it and tried to reach in there. I tell you what, I, this was a real struggle, but I finally got them attached with those bolts and they're not going anywhere, but I had to chuckle at myself several times. If you know of an easier way to attach these, I guess I could have glued them, but listen, if you have a better idea of attaching these together, please let me know down in the comments. This worked, but it was a real struggle. Anyway, I had already painted them black when I painted that other one. And then you see here, just like on the other planter, I applied Dixie Bell's Gator Hide. This is an outdoor rated acrylic finish. Easy to clean up, by the way. And it just seals everything in. Uh, several months ago, I bleached a basket and it kind of created a little bit of a stir here on YouTube. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. Anyway, I don't mind bleaching baskets like this. This one was a dollar. It wasn't anything fancy. It wasn't an heirloom. Besides the fact, the color, I just didn't like the color for our home. So I poured some bleach in a bottle and then a little glass and I used a chip brush and I just really worked on it. I allowed it to dry. It was overnight. I let it dry all night long and I think I put a couple of coats of bleach on there and then I'll check it in the morning. So it's the next day, it's a sunny day outside. I'm looking there at my planters stuck together and I'm so excited to get that planted out. And I just could not wait to look outside and it was just such a gorgeous day outside. The breeze could not have been any more perfect. The skies were blue and I thought I would just give you a little tour of our backyard. It's time to get back to work, but before I do, I have got to show you the cutest little bird cage. Look at that. Do you remember one of the recent videos that we shared here? I asked you what I should do with this little bird cage. Well, y'all came back like nobody's business. You had so many ideas, so many suggestions of what to do. When I landed on this one, I planted a little pot with Sweet Jenny. I mean, Creeping Jenny, not sweet. It is sweet, but it's called Creeping Jenny. And then my husband found this at a yard sale. Look at that. It is cast iron, a little cast iron uh, hummingbird. It's nice and heavy. It's weighted. It just looks perfect hanging off of that. So several of you suggested that I plant a real plant in the bird cage, and some of you suggested that I put some kind of bird figurine in it, and I did both. It hangs by our back door, so I get to see it every day. Both of the planters are dry now. I had They both took about one coat of the paint, and I used Dixie Bell's Caviar. It's a gorgeous, rich black. And then I put two coats of gator hide over both of the planters. And now all of my planters are coordinating. So you see me sitting that one large planter on that stand. That is a stand from an antique 
or at least vintage Apple press. The other part of this is inside. It's a long story. But anyway, I like to use this piece outside, and I've got it well protected with all that paint and the gator hide. That piece is going to last for a long time, and it makes it so easy on casters to be able to move these heavy plants around. So you see me planting this gardenia, and what I like to do is put the pot into the container that I'm going to plant it in and then I add fill soil or soil all around it to fill in around the edge then you can lift out that pot and remove the plant from the container and set it right back in there you have a perfect place to plant your plant that's a lot of planting but anyway it's an easy way to get a large plant planted in a container like this See that large square planter over to the left? It has like a design. It's pretty large. It's about 24 by 24. And I just made this over on my blog. I'll, I'll give you a link so you can see the full makeover. And then I also made this birdcage light fixture over our dining table in the back. I have a blog post for this too, and I will link that down below. Isn't that the cutest? By the way, those little birds, they're salt and pepper shakers. The hydrangea in that large container there on the left, I plan on turning that into a topiary, a topiary like this gardenia. If you have any tips on how to turn a hydrangea into a topiary and how to train it, please let me know down in the comments. I've never done it before, but I'm willing to give it a try. All right, I have a big plan for this sewing cabinet and it's not just solid paint. It's, it's gonna be a layered process, but the first step that I need to do is paint it this base color and it's called buttercream. I don't know, are you tired of me jumping back and forth between projects? Do you jump back and forth between projects? I, I love to do that. It keeps things interesting. It keeps things moving in the workshop and I don't get bored or frustrated with just one project. And that's a good thing because I tell you, when I started working on this rusted lid for this Hoosier cabinet uh, jar, I got a little frustrated because I got all that paint off, but the rust, now that was another story. It was pretty rusted because we found it in the woods. Like we go walking in the woods where we live and we find all sorts of things. And this is one of the items that we came across and we kept it. So the lid was pretty rusted. And anyway, I tried everything, a wire brush, a chisel to scrape off a bunch of the flakes. You see, I, I went ahead and put a respirator on and some safety goggles because I was stirring up a lot of rust. I got my mouse sander out. I used the steel wool. I tried so many things. And I would say that they all worked well. Not one thing worked better. I even tried this little block. It's a like a like a pumice stone for rust and for metal. It basically scrapes it all off, but it's a little bit soft and it's it forms around the curves of that really well. Anyway, I tried all these things and I think that they all work together really well. I got all the rust off. I can't wait to show you. And you know, in the last video when I shared using four aught steel wool on a mirror, many of you were surprised that you could do that, but I'm telling you, four aught steel wool will polish glass like nobody's business it just polishes it to a beautiful finish it got off all the leftover paint that the paint remover had not taken off and anyway i also found this color green to kind of match that retro look of green from all the other jars that i saw at that vintage shop Have you tried to blend different chalk paints together? I haven't, this is my first attempt, but I've been watching and I'm just so excited to even just give it a try. I didn't want this little cabinet to just be kind of, you know, flat with just one color. So I used the buttercream and I mixed in another color called coffee bean, which you would think is brown, but it actually turned it into this really nice soft gray. That is going to go along perfect with the end but the next step that I do, I can't, I don't want to give it all away. Anyway, sorry about the blurry camera there. It was, my camera was struggling. 
So what I did was I had two brushes and I kept one with the color and then I kept one dry and I used a paper towel to make sure that that second brush was always mostly dry. And it's basically lifting off some of the paint, which helps it to kind of blend and fade into the color next to it. I was pretty impressed with this. I, I used the spray bottle to keep the area very moist. So that, that continuous mister, I just sprayed it over the whole thing. It gives a nice wet surface and the, it makes the workable time on this chalk paint. I mean, this was really an easy process. Honestly, guys, this is my first time ever doing this. It was a lot of fun. I felt kind of artsy and it turned out amazing. You'll be able to see the final result in the video that I'm going to link. It was a live that I did last week and I wanted to do it live and show you. So I'll be sure to link that video so that you can see the final result of this sewing cabinet. If you have any questions about this process, be sure to ask down in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer them. Also, the Dixie Bell website has a custom color mixer. So you can take any colors that you have on hand of Dixie Bell paints and put them in this digital mixer and see what kind of color you come up with. That's what I did with the buttercream and coffee bean and I'm loving this gray color. Be sure to watch all the way to the end so that you see the, the final results of the rest of the projects. I'm also sharing some of the bloopers from this video. Y'all seem to enjoy the bloopers, so I saved them and I'll be sharing those at the very end as well. The basket didn't need much help at all. I think, what did we pay for this? A dollar or two dollars? It wasn't very much at all. All I did was take a stiff waxing brush and some white wax and I just brushed it all over. I didn't work it all into the crevices because I didn't want to. I like the two-tone look and I can't wait to sit, show you what I do with this at the end. After painting that sewing cabinet in the buttercream, I just kind of fell in love with the color. So I went ahead and paid, painted the inside of this frame in the same color. Any guesses what I'm going to do with that frame on this piece, that really dark frame? Let me know down in the comments. All right, we're going to work on those little dresses that we've bought at a vintage store. Now, these are not technically a thrift store item, but honestly, the prices were thrift store prices at this one store. I got all these dresses for between four and six dollars. They weren't much. I just took a little basin of water and some Castile soap, a very small amount, and I just hand washed them. Now, if you're if you want to put these in the washing machine, you can, but I would put it on a gentle cycle. I just wanted to play it safe and I washed them kind of old fashioned and look how dirty the water got. I couldn't believe how dirty it was. Anyway, this was super easy. I just washed them. I let them soak a little bit. And then eventually I take them out to my hose and I just rinse and rinse and rinse. And then I get to hang them on the clothesline. I don't know. That's a lot of fun. Do you still hang clothes out on the clothesline? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. It's something I enjoy doing and I'm wondering if you do too. Wow. 
Did you guess right about what I was going to do with this frame? Let me know down in the comments if you guessed it right. All I'm doing is dry brushing all the way around on the high places of this frame. It had a lot of texture. So this is an easy way to lighten up a dark surface. I can't wait to show you what I do with the middle of it. All right, this piece was not technically a thrift store find either. It was in a vintage shop, but it was only $14. And I think that I wouldn't have paid much less than that in a thrift store. And frankly, I've never seen a butter dish like this. It's oval, it's small, really small. It's The shape was so unique, I had to get it. And then I asked y'all if I should polish it or leave the finish. So I kind of did a little bit of both. You see me here, I'm getting rid of the sticker, but I'm also using that four aught steel wool on the bottom side of this silver plate butter dish. It is not real silver. I'm, I'm showing you there. If I can read the sign up close, I'll put the words, the text here so you can know what it is. But anyway, I took that four aught steel wool and I just polished the underside of it. So I kind of did both. I left it tarnished on parts and I left it polished on parts. Let me know which is your favorite, polished or unpolished. I'm hooked on these transfers lately. They are so much fun to work with, just so much fun. Anyway, I have this one by Dixie Bell. I'll be sure to link it down below, but this one design had a bunch of roses in it. I just thought it would be so pretty in this very ornate frame. And I kind of wanted it to look like a little bouquet. So I cut apart each, each of the elements and then I laid them out to get a general idea where I was going to apply each one of the transfers and I just kind of worked backwards from there. So I, I laid out the, the rows and all you have to do is take that little stick that comes with it and you rub on the surface and then you slowly lift up that film to make sure that it's all adhered down well. If it isn't adhered, you will see it sticking to the backing. You just lay it down quickly again and run that stick over it and just make sure that it's all the way down. You don't want to peel it off because lining it up again would be a huge pain to try to do. So lift it carefully, work at it slowly. I know it looks like I'm going fast, but I'm really not. I just sped the vi video up for the sake of time. Um, anyway, have fun doing these kind of projects. Th this kind of thing is just so much fun and so creative. And by the way, to seal this, super easy. You just take this spray wax by Dixie Bell. You spray it over the whole thing. It's going to seal the chalk paint, seal the frame, seal the transfer. And look, you have a nice little work of art. Back to this sewing cabinet. Oh my goodness, look, look what's coming up in that video. And now for the styling. So here's that little bleached basket. I have it sitting in my sewing room and it's holding, my sewing room is also my, my office, by the way. And this is holding some of my mic gear for all the videos that I make. I need to have microphones and they're all in those little cases tucked away so that they look nice and neat. That bleach really bleached it out and got rid of that orange look. I love how it turned out. I step outside to show you the next project and Barkley can hardly stand having glass between us. Anyway, he ran off and look at the basket. So these are some hydrangeas from Amazon and some other flowers from Hobby Lobby. They just look so pretty hanging here. They're not real. They look real to me and I don't have to worry about watering them. And by the way, on the back side of that basket, I added some more of the florals so that inside our home, you would see the pretty side as well, not just the back of the basket. Let's head over to my laundry room. In fact, I have some clothes ready to go out on the clothesline. You can see the clothespin bag there on that little crib. We made that clothespin bag a couple videos ago. I'll link it. And then just above this window, look, oh my goodness, it's those little dresses. I've got them hanging on my valance. I absolutely love this look so much. They're kind of like a little curtain. Now I do have a shade there and that's going to help protect the bottom part of that dress. This window is very bright. So I probably won't leave these little dresses there for too long because it would damage 
the hems of that of those little dresses and I don't want to do that now over my washing machine I already had these two little gowns and they help to conceal what I the messiness that's behind those cabinets I redid our laundry room a couple of years ago and in fact I have a blog post and I will share that blog post because it was quite a transformation and I'm still just kind of curating little little tidbits for the the space but these little dresses just add the perfect touch to this laundry room tell me what you think about my little curtain idea with these little dresses hey i just thought of it you might be wondering about the little hangers that i have these dresses on so i had my husband cut little bits of wood and then i made a little wire hanger and bent the wire around they're the cutest little hangers and they work perfectly to hang these little dresses Here's the back side of that little butter dish. Look how nicely it polished. So we have that side, but we also have that side. So you tell me, do you like the tarnished look or do you like the polished look? I like them both, so I kind of did both here. Now listen, another thing that I wanted to mention is that I like to use the pieces that we find at thrift stores and vintage stores. I like to actually use them. So I'm going to be using this butter dish and I'm going to put homemade butter on it. I started making butter, it's super easy. I think I shared that in, a vid in my spend the morning with me video. Uh, like I said, I'll have that video linked below. Butter is so easy to make. So anyway, I took a little chunk out of, of it out of the freezer and I put it in our little butter dish. That's about the equivalent of one stick, but you can see I can't get the lid on. So I had to chop it in half and it was frozen, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, I chopped that butter in half and made it just the right size to sit in that butter dish. It's just so cute. So I have another question. Do you keep your butter out on the counter or do you keep it in the refrigerator? We keep it out on the counter and I keep a small amount at a time so it doesn't sit out there very long. Look at the jar. It turned out so good. Like even that green to me looks very vintage. That color couldn't have been more perfect. We're going to use it to hold our coffee for the mornings. And yes, that is a wooden coffee scoop that my husband hand carved. Isn't that amazing? But anyway, the coffee, well, it just looks better than that plastic Folgers container. Don't you think? Maybe you're wondering what in the world. So this is my office and sewing room and photography room and all the things. This is where I do it. And I need a pretty little spot in this room because for the most part, it stays messy. So I took that gorgeous piece of artwork that we created and I made a pretty little spot in my sewing room. Before we get on to the bloopers, and by the way, stay tuned to the end because I have some bloopers for you. I wanted to share all of the freebies that I have for you over on my blog. See these cards, calendar pages, artwork. I've got all sorts of freebies. I've got a sign up form down below in the description. Sign up and you can have access to the freebie library. Also, be sure to watch the video so you can see what I did with that sewing cabinet. This is a little test. Where is the mic button? Dad on it, where is that? I don't see. You can see everything there, 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 there. Yep, face tracking. Where's face tracking at? Is that on? I've got a pile of stuff from the thrift store and you and I are going to make it over. I've got a pile of stuff from the thrift store and we're going to make it over. Let's get to it. <laughs> 